Hello Makers! Welcome back to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe, and for today's special edition of the Valentine's Day Awesome Creation, we're going to have a two-in-one episode. Stick around! Welcome back makers. So with Valentine's Day upon us again, I wanted to do something a bit special for this episode of uh, Awesome Creation. Now in front of me, you will see a few vases which were created by a user nicknamed VSC89 on Thingiverse. I will link these files in the description as always. But before I get more into that, I want to give you a bit of a background story of how this episode came about. A few weeks ago I was on Twitter and a photo popped up in my feed about a particular vase printed by a guy named Mark Whedon. Now Mark printed this vase in a very very particular way. It had a checkered design on it and that would have been fine if it was a dual extruder printer. However this was the Prusa i3 Mark II single extruder not even with multicolor and what was even more intriguing is that this design was done with one single color. The way that this was done is by changing the speed of the printing process on the printer. And this really intrigued me. So I started following Mark and wanted to see the progress he was doing with this particular method. Needless to say, a few days passed and more photos started coming up while Mark was refining his technique. And he was doing absolutely incredible designs. He was printing Adelinda, which looked like it had flames coming out of it. He printed a vase with this gorgeous face and printed on it. And I became even more interested. So what I did was I got in contact with Mark. I asked him if he would be interested in showcasing his work on this channel and he completely obliged and I'm thankful to Mark for this. So what I decided to do is I wanted to do something special as I said for Valentine's Day. So I spoke to Mark, I gave him the model of this particular vase and he produced the image that's on top. Now seeing as this is a Valentine's Day edition where some people love it and some people hate it. I felt that this particular design actually hit the nail right on the head. Now, the process to get to this design was a bit complex for many reasons which I will get into. However, what I did was I downloaded the vase, I went into Simplify 3D, I sliced it in a way that I would be using it for that particular filament. The original filament, as you can see here, is rigiding PETG translucent red. So I decided to use the settings that I would normally use for this particular filament with a few tweaks. I'm going to show you how. This is the vase as you see it. It's normal. There is absolutely nothing different about it than you would normally see when slicing this vase. However, there are a few differences. Now, first of all, this, as I said, was printed in rigid ink, PETG, translucent red. These are the settings that I usually use. Uh, there it's on a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I have 2.5 millimeters of, of retraction. I have the Z hop on, retraction speed, 0.20 millimeters of coasting, and I do 3 millimeters of nozzle wipe. Layer was set at 0.2 millimeter. I have four top and four bottom layers. I also have three perimeter shells, uh, obviously printing inside out. I did the first layer height of 100% and the rest, as you can see here. The only variation of speed within this print, which I did myself in settings, was the first layer speed, just to get a bit more adhesion. Now I used a skirt, as always, everything else was unticked, infill is set at 20%, support was generated for 30% infill percentage. Now the reason why I did this is because the bottom of the vase has quite a bit of a steep curve, so I, I just wanted to compensate for it just in case. 
temperatures were 80 on the heat bed and 250 on the hot end. Now this is where it's quite important. Now for the first layer I did zero fan speed and then 100% for the rest of the layers. However, you have to uncheck the adjust printing speed because you want a constant speed for the whole print apart, as we said, for the first layer. Once you do that, I just set the default printing speed at 50 millimeters a second and just change the speed for the outline. And that was basically it. Now I slice this file and as you can see, there is nothing here. So what I did was I saved it and I sent it off to Mark. What I wanted to do was for him to put the image that I wanted or that we had decided on the vase itself. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the G code file that he sent back to me. As you can see here, this is how it came back. It's in two colors. And the reason for that is those represent the speed that the printer will be printing at. The blue part is about 10 millimeters a second and the green part is about 40, about 40 millimeters a second, 40 to 45 millimeters a second. Now, this is exactly how we received it. There is no modification that you can do to it from here because it's already a G code. But what I want to show you is exactly how this image seems to be imprinted on the file itself. So this goes on one side and right straight through to the other. And you can tell this because the uh, particular image or the setting of the speed are not just done on the outside layer. But if you start going down, you can actually see that it even goes through the infill layer. And that comes in very handy because the effect is actually absolutely quite beautiful for this particular print. Now this, as you can see, has the slow movement on the majority of the print and the fast print is done on the image itself. Mark has actually sent me two versions of this particular file. This is one of them. The other one is inverted where the fast printing speed is done on most of the print on the vase itself. However, the slow part is actually the design itself. Once I got this, I switched on the Prusa i3 Mark II and I got to printing. So this right here is the end result. This was printed in uh, MakerGeeks PETG. Now the reason why I used MakerGeeks was first of all, I have just received my December uh, gig box. Yes, it took this long to get to Malta. Apart from that, the material itself uses the same parameters as rigid ink PETG. So it was, it was fine for me. It came out absolutely great i was i was completely blown away by the effect that this printing technique has now the only thing you will notice is at the back there is a seam this could have been avoided by me turning the um the model itself before sending it to mark but to be completely honest it didn't bother me that much i was just way too excited um uh, with um with the print itself once I did that, I wanted to experiment a bit. So what I did was I grabbed the same code that I was, what, that I was using on the Prusa i3 Mark II and I simply put it on the Tronxy 
And I printed it in uh, Maker Geeks Crystal Series PLA Red, which also came in the Geek Box. Now, obviously, the temperatures on this are much different. And once I sent the G code to Mark and he sent it back to me, those couldn't be changed. So what I simply did was I used the same parameters, but for the temperature on the heat bed and the hot end, I simply tweaked them on live adjustment. And it turned out absolutely, absolutely amazing. Now, having successfully done those two, when I saw that I have a red and a white, I wanted to also print a blue one because, as we all know, Paris is the city of love. And this being Valentine's Day edition, well, you know where I'm getting at. <laughs> so I grabbed a spool of Filamentum Iceland Blue Crystal Clear PLA and I printed this one. Now this was printed the inverted way of the others, whereas the others had the image going in slow mode and everything else fast. This was printed in slow mode and the image was done in fast mode. The results weren't perfect, um, mostly because of the particular filament and the settings I had used. However, I can still see the effect of the image beautifully and you can see the shine through it. It looks absolutely great. Once that was done, it was time for the big boy right here. I wasn't sure I had enough rigiding PETG to finish this, but the color, as you all know, I love this color. It looks absolutely brilliant. I wanted to print a much bigger one. So what I had to do was I had to rescale this in Simplify 3D. I sent it back to Mark. Mark ran the code again through Perl sent it back to me and this came out of the Prusa. Now this took over 18 hours to print. It is absolutely one of the most amazing things I've ever seen printed. And it's just the simplicity of it, of just changing speed. The effect is absolutely insane. And I absolutely love it. I think this, this could be something, this technique could go a very long way if someone just invested in adding this as a feature to any slicer that's freely available. Now, the only issue I had this with this particular vase were the overhangs. PETG is a bit iffy with overhangs if uh, let's but let's say if he if he's fine um however i'm really not at all disappointed because the feature is the image itself granted on the back there is that seam which i could have avoided by changing the orientation of the print but i had completely forgotten once again and it came out absolutely gorgeous and i'm really 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 happy and I was extremely excited to showcase these models on the channel. Mark deserves a lot of recognition for this work. He also uploaded the Perl code on GitHub, which I will link in the description below. However, before you run to GitHub and download the Perl code, I want to give you the same warning disclaimer that Mark gave me. This particular G-code, or the, the way this is done, it's it could be a bit dangerous to your printer. It changes certain parameters which could literally harm your printer, and he was very adamant that I do not play around with this G-code or this code, this Perl code, unless I have a programmer's background, which I absolutely do not which is why I bugged him so much and kept sending files back and forth. And he was very willing to help out. So if you do have a programmer's background, by all means, go download, see if you can help him out, see if we can make this absolutely great, maybe implement it in some kind of slicer or an external app, the same way that Prusa have the color print app. Now, for those of you who have a Prusa i3 Mark II, I am going to be uploading the links 
to these files. Once again, I'm going to give you my own disclaimer. These worked on my Prusa i3 Mark II. They're done with settings which I am comfortable with. They might not be with yours, but they should work. As I said, the temperatures are set to 250 and 80 degrees. If you're going to do this, if you're going to download these files and print them on your Prusa i3 Mark II, make sure those temperatures are fixed for the relevant material you're going to use. Other than that, I would actually encourage you to download these if you have a Prusa i3 and possibly some PETG. Try them out. It comes out absolutely gorgeous. There is only this design, which I can upload because this is the only one I have. I truly hope that I'll be able to work with Mark to do a few more designs and be able to upload them. The one thing I want to point out is that this was done for the Prusa i3 Mark II. However, these two were done on the Tronxy because it has a Prusa i3 style. Um, it still worked, it worked fine, and it printed without any problem. So I don't know exactly how it would work on any other printer, but what I can tell you is that they worked on mine. So that is it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Awesome Creation. I want to thank Mark for helping me out and be so willing to uh, let me use his awesome, awesome way of 3D printing stuff. I truly hope one of you helps out, goes on GitHub, downloads this and makes it into something absolutely great um, and accessible for absolutely everyone who has a 3D printer. I want to point out one very important thing. If you're going to print this, any of these, make sure you use the hashtag Velocity Painting. That is what this has been dubbed and it absolutely is spot on. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Like the video, subscribe, comment, follow me on Twitter. In the meantime, happy Valentine's Day and happy making, guys.